the burden of thyroid eye disease is pretty significant. Uh, certainly from a patient point of view, this disease affects all aspects of patients' lives. So the eyelid swelling, the pain, discomfort of the, around the eyes, and then also the endocrine manifestations of the disease really impair a patient's social function, their ability to work, their ability to drive, and really how other people see them throughout life. And so the, the burden really is quite significant. And in many quality of life studies, it's been comparable to breast cancer. Yeah, thyroid eye disease can lead to blindness. In fact, in a small subset of patients, blindness does occur due to the muscles behind the eye getting large and squeezing the blood supply to the optic nerve. In other patients, the eyes are so bulgy that they can't close, can't close at night or even during the day, and that can result in scarring of the anterior portion of the eye, which can severely damage the vision. The current treatments for thyroid eye disease are rather limited. They really encompass um, just reducing the swelling and the short-term manifestations of the disease. Treatments such as IV steroids and radiation have really shown, been shown not to have any effect upon the long-term manifestations and outcome of the disease, namely the proptosis or eye bulging and the strabismus or double vision. The new phase three trial that was with the data released looking at tepratumumab was really encouraging. In fact, for the first time, there appears to be a medication that can be given during the active phase of the disease and actually reverse not only just the eyelid swelling and the clinical activity score of the in improvement of the patients, but also to reduce the proptosis and the eye bulging and the double vision and also improve the quality of life. So, so really it could be a watershed moment in, in the treatment of this disease. The mechanism of tepratumumab is that it's a monoclonal antibody to the insulin-like growth factor one receptor, the IGF-1 receptor. And the IGF-1 receptor is very much overexpressed on the cells of interest in this disease, namely the fibroblasts derived from the tissues around the eye or the orbit. So this overexpression is the mechanism from which this antibody binds this receptor and seemingly inactivates it um, and then likely uh, downregulates the disease. And it really seems to be dramatic in this fashion since many, most of the endpoints were met as early as six weeks or two infusions of this drug. The phase two and phase three study both showed relatively fast uh, improvement of both the proptosis and the double vision and the clinical activity score. This was all done within six weeks of receiving two doses of the drug. This went on over the course of the study of 24 weeks, which continued to demonstrate rather remarkable improvement of the proptosis. For example, as an orbital surgeon such as myself, I can achieve three millimeters of reduction with a surgery where I have to drill out the bone between the eye and the brain, but this drug in, in many of these patients was able to achieve almost three millimeters of reduction by the drug alone. So rather, rather significant. So it's hard, you know, it's often hard to convey what three millimeters or a magnitude of a response would be. But I think the easiest way is that you would notice if someone eye, someone's eye was bulging two millimeters, you'd say, hey, I think there's something wrong with your eye. And so three millimeters is what these patients can often achieve with the surgery I described, where you actually have to shave down the bone. So it's a rather significant improvement. Um, and these patients all noted um, a rather significant improvement, not only of the proptosis, but also the double vision and all the swelling. So really dramatically improving their quality of life, I think, which is really when we look at the bottom line of how this impacted patients, that improvement of quality of life was the most dramatic because that really signifies that this was a huge clinical benefit to these patients. So I don't know anything about cost, um, but the side effect profile appears to be well tolerated. You know, one of the concerns is always you have a new drug, you don't want the side effects to be worse than the disease itself, and, and we've encountered that much with the steroids in the past. But this drug, the side effects appear to be relatively mild, um, and all the adverse events appear to be reversed or resol resolving during the course of the disease. But they, most notably, none of them required discontinuation of therapy. So patients tolerated some of the muscle spasms and things that were relatively commonly noted in about 30% of patients, but these were mild and did not constitute any reason to stop the therapy. 
the submission is um, going to be toward the FDA later in the year. I think if this drug, you know, comes to the market, it will really reinforce the co-management role between the endocrinologist and the oculoplastic surgeon. And one may choose to infuse it or the other. I think both would be very capable. But the, really the crux of the issue will be, I think, the co-management of both the, with the endocrinologist, helping really control the thyroid, thyroid function, manage some of the side effects potentially of this medication, and then potentially the oculoplastic surgeon, really helping with the diagnosis management and you know the appropriate use of this infusion agent. Mm -hmm.